up MFers, welcome back to another very exciting episode. Today is a day that I enjoy doing, but I am kind of dreading, and that is Tackle Organization Day. I'm getting all geared up for getting my boat completely ready for open water season. I'm traveling down south a few times here. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you guys how I like to organize all my tackle, kind of give you the rundown of my entire tackle swath that I've acquired over the years. So the reason for me doing all this organization is twofold. First off, like I said, I'm about to start the open water season and I have to get this, those, that, that, right there, all organized and ready to go for the season. The second reason is something I'm very, very excited about. I am having my first ever meetup type event this upcoming Saturday, March 3rd in Omaha, Nebraska. It is going to be at the Small Boat Bass Club Swap Meet, which is like a giant garage sale uh, where people sell hunting stuff, fishing stuff, everything. I usually have a booth there, so I'm super, super jacked. So I'm gonna have a booth there and I'll put all the information on the screen right now, let you guys know where you need to go. I'll put it down in the description as well. If you wanna meet not only myself, but Mrs. Melican Fishing, Max Melican Fishing, and your favorite Ozark Mountain Man. The Zark, the Zark's even making an appearance. Can't freaking wait. So come say hi to us, but bring a whole bunch of money and please buy a bunch of stuff because I'm gonna be selling Six Cent stuff, Mega Bass stuff, Mystery Tackle Box stuff, and some never before sold Melican fishing gear like this shirt I'm wearing right now. That's what's in those boxes right there. That's all for you guys. Stuff that's never been sold before, so come check us out. So many of you guys have been asking about my custom painted baits and how you can purchase them. That would be the one place that you can actually come purchase my custom painted stuff. So first thing I'm gonna do is show you guys my entire garage tackle storage and all my garbage I have for fishing. And second thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do some time lapses in this video, show you guys how I get all my stuff organized and how I differentiate between all this rod reel hard bait, soft bait, how I like to store my stuff so it's easy to grab on the go in a way I think you should do it too. So this is my rod and reels, uh, pretty self-explanatory. That's a giant mess of rod and reels I need to figure out. And then this over here, a lot of it's new tackle. I got a bunch of orders in from tacklefreaks.com. Got some swim baits and stuff from Oliver at Big Bass Dreams I gotta get put away. I, obviously I got all my soft plastics, hard baits, all my boxes. I took everything out of the boat uh, and put it right here for organization. This is line, obviously. This is just extra plastics I had laying around. This is a conglomeration of uh, what happens from a fishing season, or probably this is from about a week in my boat. It's a disaster, as you can see, and I need to find places for all that. So this over here is my workbench area. This is where all the lure making magic happens. So this is my custom lure painting station. I got my fly tying vise, spare blanks up there. That's where I hang my baits. This is a light. It lights up my area. It's good to have lights to so you can see stuff. Uh, compressor, that up there, that's extra bait boxes. That says Christmas, but probably lures in there. Uh, this is my home brewing kit. Need to get going on that. Spare boxes of stuff I hadn't needed in my boat, like top waters and stuff like that. Frogs, haven't needed those in the winter. This is all my boxes for reels, spare reels, broken reels, everything. This right here is all like boat cleaner, fixer type stuff. Uh, as well as, you know, bug spray stuff I need to put in the boat. This is a propeller. Uh, you use it to drive the engine. Um, mine's dinged up because I like to go fast in areas where I shouldn't. This here is like my jig hook making powder coat, jig skirts. We got molds. We got stuff to tie, different baits, different hair jigs and stuff like that in there. We got chatter bait, jig making stuff here, rod turner that I made. And then down below, this is all spare baits down here. This is all boxes, foils, scale masking, stuff like that, tools, extra microwaves, always good. This is my uh, my to-go system when I'm bank fishing or, or fishing in tournaments. When I fish in tournaments, you guys probably see me in Joe's boat. I like to carry this big guy right here. That's great for putting hard bait boxes in. It's good for putting soft plastic stuff in there, but we're gonna get in a little bit further in a second. I'll show you guys how I like to store my stuff. But this right here is absolutely money. It's somewhat waterproof at Mille Lacs. It wasn't waterproof, but waterproof enough and of course tackle bags lure turner homemade lure turner with a broken carrot six rod let's uh start on all this mess now this is this is terrible drink of choice today is the sam adams rebel grapefruit ipa actually not that fruity i've really liked this one for a very long time plus it was on sale 
Okay, so the first thing we're gonna talk about, I don't even know where to start, this video is probably gonna be all over the place, is labeling our boxes. This is what it's supposed to look like. This is a method that I've kind of come upon uh, recently here that I really, really like. It's using white duct tape and a black Sharpie. I've tried the label makers. Uh, those don't seem to hold up that long. I've tried just writing a Sharpie on the box. Those seem to wear off. I know a lot of guys like those. It hasn't worked well for me. So white duct tape sticks, sticks a lot better than any type of tape I've found. Uh, and obviously it stands out really good. So I think the first thing we're gonna do is, is throw a bunch of labels on all these boxes that I have here. Uh, and then I guess we can go from there. All right, so got everything labeled up the way I want it to. As you can see, you know, this is how I like to label it. So we, I like to put a big one on the top and then I put one in the front as well. So when they're down in the compartments in your tackle bag or whatever, you can see it. Now, I don't really have a reason to do them on the sides. I don't like to put bait boxes on the sides when, when I'm doing soft baits because you don't want the tails to get all kinked up or they get bent up. So I just do it top, front, that'll suffice. So. Yeah, I, I have a stupid amount of crankbaits. These are my shallow crankbaits. Honestly, I want to put it in a wide box, but I just can't justify carrying more than 40 shallow crankbaits that are, you know, less than five foot divers. And I have a medium crank box. I have a deep crank box. I got a jerk bait box. Here's my top water box. You know, once again, this is another box. This doesn't include my frogs, which I also want to, to split it up into a bigger 3700 size, but this is my top waters and stuff. So that's how I store those. Terminal tackle is another one that I think is, it's super, super tricky to, to organize and get just how you want it. This is how I have it now. I've got my main terminal tackle box. This is the one that's always going to be with me no matter what that has all my my tungsten weights up here it's got all my everyday hooks i use a couple drop shot hooks flipping hooks punch stops you know spinner blades stuff like that uh, a couple different types of treble hooks that i can just throw in and use if need be uh, and that's it so that's the the term my main terminal tackle box but then you guys know i like to throw the flick shake and, and tubes a lot and stuff so this is my my tube flick shake you can get a couple spoons in there uh, i pour all those myself because i got molds for them and then of course i need my my swim jig head underspin and swing head stuff i throw that biffle head a lot so you know i got my biffle heads i got my war baits head my six cents heads anything to throw a jig with i even got some shaky heads that i pour in there so that's i mean that's that's a lot of stuff in there that's about a, a 25 pound box also that is uh my, my three prong approach to some of my terminal tackle the next thing that's extremely difficult to store that that i'm i've split up now into a bunch of different boxes is swim baits you know swim baits obviously you cannot have the tails on those soft swim baits get kinked up so i've kind of split it up this way and i still have a whole bunch i need to get all those added right there so we got big hard baits big soft baits medium soft baits stuff like that i need to get those into these boxes but this is how i did it so i got this one my small swim bait box this is all those uh kitex style baits those ones that i like to throw in kansas when i'm down there so that's those so we got the small soft swim baits we got these soft swim baits, which are the four to six inch swim baits, how I labeled them. I think I'm gonna move my, my six inch Huddlestons and stuff in here too, but I just got a bunch of these guys. This is the uh, MC Swimmer. This guy's a six inch swim bait. It, it actually, it fits absolutely perfect with like an owner beast hook. This guy's gonna be a killer. Then I just got all these Smash Tech baits too. Look how delicious these guys look. These sexy Smash Tech baits. Got all different types of uh, really lifelike bluegill shad crappie barfish all sorts of different species they mimic of course got the bigger kitex pat hollow bellies got these smash tech swim baits that are just gonna be killer too got some smaller mega bass swim baits got that shiner swim bait you guys are gonna see me throw that go with the thumbs up if you guys want to see more swim bait videos i got a lot of comments so that's my four to six inch soft swim baits for now i need to get those all added to it i i don't know how that's all gonna fit and then we got the hard swim bait situation, which is gonna have to change because as you can see, that thing is almost full already because stuff like this takes up a whole lot of space on a 10 and a half inch glide bait. And I got all these sweet fish 30 acre stuff. Oh, I can't show that one. That was a secret actually. Don't don't look at that one there. Um, and then we got, yeah, we got, we got big hard baits. These guys are six cents wake baits. Those are gonna have to go in a different box because we gotta make room for those dudes. So that's, 
my big hard bait situation. I think I'm gonna make this, since it's a bigger 3700 box, my, my big swim bait, my big hard swim bait storage, and, and then take one of these boxes down here with nothing in them and make it like my, my medium, small hard bait, hard swim bait storage. And then we got the big soft swim bait situation. These are the Magnum soft swim bait. So these you gotta be really careful with. This is a $100 bait right here. This is a brand new $100 bait. You don't wanna bend the tail and screw that up. You don't wanna waste your $100 swim bait. So I've kinda taken the method that, you know, I've seen some of the swim bait guys like, uh, like Matt Allen, Matt Peters, talk about and I've laid them in this box um, out of the package so I've laid them crossways like that that will keep them from getting the tails all bent up if they're nice and tightly stored plus I've threw all these six inch uh, Huddleston swim baits my smash tech convict swim baits awesome weedless bait in their original boxes or, or in these convict boxes which hold them nice and, and it lets the tails lay straight they don't get all kinked up and these over here we got Huddleston's right there we got a big this one needs to be put back a little bit, but we got big smash tech swim baits, a seven inch shad bait, barfish, big old Huddleston bait. We're gonna be throwing this weekend. So that's how I got those set up. But like I said, I think I might take the six inch baits, put them in the six inch soft swim bait box and, and leave the big ones in here. Cause I got more big ones, the big 10 inch mega bass and eight inch mega bass, but I need to get in here as well. It doesn't look like there's much room. So that's how I got that working as we speak. So the next step in my process is replacing boxes and, and switching and conglomerating and upsizing and downsizing boxes. As you can see, we got a box like this. That is no freaking good. We need to get those replaced. And you're starting to see some soft baits mixed in. So let's talk about soft bait storage for a second. I've got, let's call it three different ways that I like to store my soft baits. So the first way I like to store them and I would prefer to store them if it was at all possible is in these hard boxes. Because other than that one, which is destroyed, you can fit these soft baits in these nice boxes. They, they fit in there nice. They don't get kinked too bad. And, and it's a lot easier storage than having to thumb through a whole bunch of bags. You can organize them all by color, by shape. This is my tube box. So, so we got beavers, you know, big beavers, kinky beavers, small beavers, all sorts, missile baits, beavers, stuff like that. So ideally that's what we would do. But as you guys know, that that's not possible sometimes because you get them all filled up and then you go to the store and buy that next new sexy hot bait and all of a sudden you don't got room for them or you buy extras or you're going to fish in your buddy's boat and you don't want to carry the whole box. Well, you like two of the colors. You're, you're going to fish clean water. So you just want your green pumpkin and watermelon beavers out of there. You don't need to take the whole box. So then what do you do? You know, you, you, I don't keep the damn, all the bags laying around. I have thousands of bags laying around in here. Kind of like up there, hanging on the wall. I'd have thousands of those if I did that. So the way I like to store them is one, put them in boxes like this. So beavers, that's in a nice big box. That's gonna work out perfect. Craws, that's pretty self-explanatory. It's these paddle tail swim baits, that's all good as well. And then for the extra stuff that I have laying around, I like to put them in bigger bags like that, which is a huge issue right now. So I like to have a big bag with craws, a big bag with creatures, and a big bag with worms. At the very, very least, those three are very, very important to me. Over there, you got a big bag for hollow belly swim baits, which I'm trying to get away from a little bit, as you can see by having three different soft swim bait boxes. Now the problem with that method is, like when I went to Mille Lacs, I don't need a bunch of black and blue creature baits when I'm going to do smallmouth only tournaments. So then I got these little bags bags that have just, you know, tubes in them, mini scrubs in them, little tiny finesse worms in them, drop shot worms is another little bag. And, and before you know it, you got all these different bags switched around and it ends up looking like this nonsense. So that's the problem with that method. So method number one, the most tidy, but not always possible is putting them in hard boxes. Method number two, sorting them by different types, craw, creature, worm, putting them in big bags so they're ready to go and organize that way. And then let's talk about step number three. The third different thing I like to do with the baits I know I'm going to be using that day on the water. I have a ton of confidence, like my magic worm, my, my magic tube, uh, rage craws, menace grubs, whatever my jig trailer is I'm gonna be using that day. I put them in a day box. That's method number three. So I'll take the bags, I'll stuff them in this day box just to 3,700 clear Plano box. And that works awesome too. If you're going to do some bank fishing or you're fishing in your buddy's boat, you can throw everything you need in this box. 
that way. So that's the way I like to store my soft baits. It's the best method I've found for myself. It might not work best for you, but that's what I do uh, as someone that has a boat, fishes in other boats and fishes on the bank. So first step's gonna be to replace some of these broken boxes. Second step's going to be to upsize bait boxes, whatever. And that's not even my entire rod situation over there. That's a disaster. I don't think we're gonna get to those in this video. Basically the rods I use go in the boat, the rods I don't go over there somewhere, but uh, I'm gonna sell a bunch of those too. So definitely come see me at that swap meet. You're gonna wanna buy my stuff. All right, welcome back to day number two of this is taking way too long to sort my tackle day. As you can see, the box situation is all figured out, so I'm very, very happy about that. Now it's time to tackle this big mess of soft plastic baits that are left over. So the way I'm gonna do that is, I'm gonna dump them all out right here. I'm gonna sit right there in that chair and I'm gonna separate them into different piles. I'm gonna have a pile for craws, creatures, worms, swim baits, that's my little day box situation I was telling you guys about right there. So that's gonna be all the baits I'll need in the next couple days because I'm going down to Stockton Lake in Missouri. And then I'm also gonna make a big pile right over there for stuff I'm selling with swap meet. That I'm gonna sell that stuff just crazy, crazy cheap as well as my, my custom painted stuff. You know, I've sold some of my custom painted stuff, uh, hard baits that is for like 20, 25 bucks a piece. I'm gonna sell for like dollar, two dollars, three dollars, three dollars top. So gonna be crazy cheap. Same with all these plastics, just stuff that it's all great stuff. It wouldn't be here if I didn't have confidence when I got it that it would catch fish. But there, it just, it's not reasonable for me to have this much stuff and that much stuff up there and that much stuff up there. So time to get sorting. All right, so as you guys can see, that's gonna be the cell pile there. That's the creature pile. We have way too many creature baits, so that's gonna have to get downsized another time through sorting. Craws, again, a lot of craws, worms, way too many freaking worms. And then I kind of made like a tube slash drop shot uh, pile over there. Those are like smallmouth stuff for the main part, but yeah, I think that's as far as this video is gonna get today. So now at this point, we're gonna put those in their own separate big bag, uh, put those in the boat, along with whatever boxes we're gonna need, obviously, for the next couple days. And then as we move into the spring, you know, like I said, Missouri. So of course, I'm gonna need my terminal tackle. I'm gonna need my, my six cents curves, stuff like that, tubes, uh, jigs, everything like that. But this stuff, these three piles especially, are all gonna have to get downsized. I, I can't have, I don't need this many worms. Craws, I do go through a whole bunch of. Creature baits, yeah, I use them a ton, but that's, that's I still need to thin the herd on those and get some of those things into that pile where I can sell them to you guys and uh, have you come check them out. Like I said, they'll all go in big bags in the boat. Anything that doesn't go in there is gonna go on the wall for backup spare type stuff. And that's, that's my tackle organization system, guys. That is going to be where we take this out today. I'm gonna get all this stuff picked up, put in the boat. I have to figure out that entire rod reel situation. I'm probably not gonna need a ton because I'm going down to the Ozarks. I know exactly what I'm gonna wanna be throwing down there. But yeah, I'm super stoked to get back down to Missouri, do some Ozarks fishing. Like I said, next Saturday, come see us, March 3rd. Omaha, Small Boat, Bass Club, Swap Meet, Concordia High School. All the information's right down below. Come see us, come buy my stuff. Like I said, I'm gonna be selling my custom painted stuff for stupid cheap. I'm gonna have new Melican fishing apparel like this sexy embroidered high life hat will be there for sale. All different stuff you've never seen before. Some, some brand new designs even. But yeah, comment down below. Let me know what you guys think of my tackle storage system. Maybe you think I, I do it wrong. Let me know what, what you guys do, what works for you. Or uh, hopefully you learned some things. Hopefully I helped you organize your tackle uh, and give you a better method of organizing your tackle moving forward. But as always, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I am out of here. Peace. I'm not sorry. I can't help this love like mine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sorry. I can't stop with a love like mine.